morning, everybody. Welcome to Shoalhaven Baptist Church. It's good to see some faces we haven't seen in a while and some new people. Uh, Kyle's back with us and Sarah's here and uh, Ivan, Ben and Beck. Boy, we've got some COVID returnees from sickness and isolation. Uh, it's good to have uh, everybody here. We do have uh, a, a cake after church this morning, so you're welcome to, to stick around for a few minutes and enjoy some cake with us. But we're going to stand in just a moment. We're going to sing 171. 171. You'll recognize the tune, but the words are a little bit different. It's Ask Ye What Great Thing I Know. 171. Let's all be upstanding as we sing. singing good song to start with let's uh, open in prayer dear heavenly father thank you for your goodness your many blessings lord thank you for the the salvation that you offer the gospel truths found in your word that uh, can be for every one of us that great thing that that we can know and and rest uh, assuredly in please bless this service today be with our singing help us as we worship and praise you uh, be with the teaching and preaching of your word we're, we're thankful for the lesson we just had already Lord, I pray that you'd uh, be with every place, every group of people where your word is opened and where your, your truth is, uh, is uh, taught and preached. I pray that you would be glorified. I pray that uh, the believers would be edified and instructed and, and uh, changed and corrected. And I pray that lost people would come to know you as Savior. They would, they would recognize your death, burial, and resurrection uh, in their place, Lord, for their sins, and they would turn to you and call upon you for salvation from sin and hell. I pray that you bless uh, all that we do here. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, please be seated. Let's see. We'll make a couple of announcements before our next song. Remember, there is a, a, uh, we've got a birthday cake to share this morning. And uh, remember, our services are live streamed, but we'd like to have you here if you can make it. Uh, we've got prayer meeting on Wednesday night at 7 p.m., and Kids Club has started back up, 4.30, the younger ones are meeting. And then at 6 o'clock, we have our youth group meeting. And, of course, every Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, all-age Sunday school. Then we have a little bit of a, of a cup of time, and then we have our 11 o'clock main service like this right now. Uh, just uh, come when you're able and uh, follow the uh, COVID protocols. Let's go ahead and go over our Bible verse at this time. It's John 5:39. It's in your bulletin, or you might have got a card. We'll go over it twice, as we normally do. <clears throat> then we'll ask uh, Brother James Cox if he'd uh, come and pray for us for the uh, offering. We're not collecting the... Uh, yeah, we are collecting in the... Uh, 
we've got it here. Are we collecting with a... Uh, there we go. We'll ask Brother James to come and pray for that. But first, let's go over our, uh, our Bible verse a couple of times. John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. John chapter 5, verse 39. Once again, thanks. John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. John chapter 5, verse 39. There's so many things we could say about that, but uh, I suppose we've all run into people who've said, the Bible says, and then they say something that the Bible does not say. Uh, search the scriptures, and uh, you'll know the truth, which can make you free. You'll know that the, the Bible testifies of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Brother James, if you'd come at this time, thank you. Pray for us. Pray for the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come here and hear what you would have us to hear from your word. Father, please help us to have open hearts for you, Father. Please help us to draw closer to you and to put off things that we would waste our time on, Father, especially sinful things. Please help us to be better saints, Father. And Father, please help us to give to missions. Um, please help them to know that we are praying for them, Father. And Father, just please protect them and help them to reach the lost, Father, that they may come to know Christ as their Saviour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Thanks for that. What was that song? Anyone know? Under His Wings. That's right. All right, we're going to go to 296. 296, that'll be our next song. I forgot to say hi to Matthew. Good morning, mate. <laughs> Let's all sing 296, Be Still My Soul.
pass. I think there might be a verse missing there. There's probably some other, maybe many verses. But what a wonderful song and some good truths there. All right, uh, let's go to 557. It'll be our last song before Pastor Shelleber comes to preach to us. 557, For All the Saints. <coughs> for that. All right, Pastor Shelleber, if you'd come at this time, please. Well, thank you, Pastor Hall. Thank you all for singing. Wonderful to have some... Uh, uh, faces return who were here last week uh, for the first time last week and great to uh, have some new faces uh, here this morning as well I think we're just starting to kind of get ourselves through the COVID-y thing Amen. and uh, so uh, great to see you all here this morning and uh, wonderful to be here and yes it was great singing great hymns and great singing why don't you turn with me in uh, John's Gospel Gospel of John and we'll be looking in chapter 20 John chapter 20 if you've got your Bible there and like to follow along I'll read a few verses in uh, a minute or two so uh, that's great uh, some of you are uh, at home and not able to be not able to be with us and uh, uh, some are not not well and uh, some are just having to be home because somebody in their family is not well so uh, I do trust that those of you at home are enjoying our church service this morning and we look forward to the time when we can all be gathered together and take our masks off and, and sing loudly and you know have conversations together without having to hide behind a mask be wonderful so we look forward to that time John chapter 20 I'm going to read to you just a few verses so um, let's stand together as we honour God with the reading of his word this morning. I'm going to start in verse 19 
I suppose actually uh, I'm going to read 10 verses down to verse 29. That's probably more than a few. Um, however, it, it, it'll give us the idea of what's going on. So John chapter 20 and uh, in verse 19 we'll start there. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And when he, uh, when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whomsoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the prints of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into the side I will not believe and after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas with them then came Jesus the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said peace be unto you then saith he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither my hand, and thrust it into the, my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. A blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Let's just pray. Our Heavenly Father, we we thank you, Lord, for the words that are in the scriptures. Well, Lord, for they're important for us to know. They bring forth the things that you would have us know. And Lord God, we pray this morning as we uh, consider this passage of scripture, Lord, that you would bless us through it. And Lord God, if there be those that do not know Jesus Christ, and as Thomas cannot say, my Lord and my God, then Lord, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. And we'll thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. You may be seated. Now, there are some um, remarkable appearances of our Lord after his resurrection. And it seems that each one of those met the particular need of, of a group of people or of a person. Uh, Mary's need of comfort and reassurance was found in her meeting with the Lord at the tomb when... He, uh, she heard him call out her name. The disciples on the road to Emmaus had their scholarship refreshed and, uh, and their faith renewed as they came to know uh, the Lord and Saviour when he blessed that meal that they were going to share together there. And Thomas, Thomas the stiff-necked unbeliever and his had his faith revitalized um, when he bowed and acknowledged the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and as Saviour. Could it be that the uh, presence of Jesus is enough to bring reassurance and gladness with faith? Well, it seems to be the case. For Thomas, it was. Often we think of Thomas, don't we, as doubting Thomas. And I guess that comes from that passage of scripture we just read. Well, we probably could call him Believing Thomas, couldn't we? But he's got the Doubting Thomas name. What was it that Thomas doubted? Was it the res resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ? Was it uh, even who Jesus was? Was he merely a doubter or was he an unbeliever? When we doubt, we indicate, of course, we can be persuaded. Uh, you know. I'm not sure if that's so. That's doubt, isn't it? But we can be 
persuaded. Doubt is that feeling of uncertainty, a, a lack of conviction, a, a I'm not sure kind of thinking, but I could be persuaded. Now, I can't speak for you, of course, but it may be that you are like I have been sometimes and had doubts. We can doubt all kinds of things. But perhaps in our Christian life there comes a time when, when we might doubt our salvation, when we might doubt about Christ. For many of us that can be so. We, we know that we did call upon the Lord for salvation. We, we know that the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Of course, that's Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. And even although we, we know the facts and we know at the time of our seeking the Lord and our calling upon him for forgiveness in Jesus' name, we were quite sincere and we really did mean it. And sometimes it's good, I've found, uh, and I suggest that if you can, you should write in the front of your Bible the day that you were saved. And it's good to be able to go back because what happens to us sometimes is uh, we might do something, say something or be somewhere and the devil gets in our ears and says, oh, you couldn't really be a Christian, you wouldn't be doing this. Or you couldn't really be a Christian because of whatever reason. And we can be lured into doubting. At the time of our salvation Jesus forgave us and uh, we are quite assured that our salvation is permanent it is eternal life you know, it does go forever and and so we're not going to lose it so if we have it then we've always got it but sometimes somehow or other there comes some sort of doubt and then one day we we read a scripture passage or uh, uh, we hear a sermon preached or perhaps a friend uh, speaks to us about something uh, from the scriptures and that doubt goes away. And what a great day that is when our doubt flies out the window and we are reassured of our faith. I think this was a great day for Thomas. Thomas was also called Didymus. Didymus means twin. Now there's no biblical record of him having a twin brother or sister. Um, perhaps it had become a nickname for him. Perhaps he did have a twin. Uh, I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. We can speculate, but we don't know. But what we do know is that in each of us, there is at times that tendency to be unsure, just as Thomas seemed to be here. And so for some of us, in some respects, perhaps Thomas is our twin. Maybe he is. The first thing which comes to mind regarding this story of the Lord and Thomas is a question. And the question is, why wasn't Thomas with the other disciples on that first resurrection Sunday? Why wasn't he there? And another question we could ask is, why was Thomas so adamant that he wasn't going to believe unless certain conditions were met? It could be that both questions have their answer in the man himself. Because the scriptures say, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. This absence may have been accidental, it may have been unpreventable in some way. Now we, we say to you about coming to church, you know, Sunday morning, just make it a rule, I go to church Sunday morning. But sometimes we're prevented. Sometimes we're unwell, and that's happened to a few of us recently. 
and there can be other reasons why we might be prevented but we ought to be there if we possibly can it's great to be with the other believers it's great to be in church on Sunday and Thomas should have been there with the other disciples that day and the question comes as to why wasn't he there now there's not a lot known about Thomas in the scriptures um, a couple of things uh, he said are recorded but prior to the events of uh, surrounding the death of Lazarus you might remember Jesus friend Lazarus who who died and they sent a message to, to Jesus to let him know that that had happened or that he was sick and was near to death and, and Jesus kind of hung about for a few days and didn't go back to Bethany from where he was he'd gone to the Jordan River to avoid uh, the Jews who had been seeking to stone him to death and it was there beyond Jordan where the news of the death of Lazarus came to him and after a little bit of time Jesus decided to go back to Bethany the disciples were also concerned about this about the Jews and what they would do they, they were, by this time there was uh, considerable resistance from the Jewish leadership uh, regarding Christ and under this set of circumstances Thomas said this let us go also that we may die with him and you can read it in John chapter 11 and in verse 16 there so here's a man who is faithful and loyal to the point that he's considering paying the ultimate sacrifice was Thomas perhaps a bit of a pessimist oh let's go we're going to die you know <laughs> so what you know I, I'm not sure could be so but the only other time that Thomas is recorded as saying anything is when he asked a question of Jesus that uh, others weren't sure about but weren't willing to say that they didn't understand it's great isn't it when uh, you're in a group of people perhaps uh, you know you're doing a Bible study or something or you're at school and you're in a class and you don't get it but you're not game to say because you don't want to look like an idiot in front of everybody well here's Thomas and he asked the question in my father's house uh, oh Jesus had said this first of all let me give you that Jesus said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also and whither I go you know and the way you know and that's in John chapter 14 and verses 2 through to 4 so here's Thomas who says to himself I don't know what's this about and you know I reckon the other disciples were probably thinking the same but here's Thomas speaks up and he says we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way that's pretty brave really Thomas is confronting the the prospect of being separated from Jesus and not knowing the way to follow and he's almost in despair and he says Lord I don't understand I don't know and all the other disciples are probably going phew I'm glad someone asked the question he says we want to go with you Jesus but we don't know how we don't know where and I guess as we look at this we see the kind of person that Thomas was he was a devoted disciple of the Lord but he was also a man with a bit of a melancholy nature Do you know what a melancholy nature is we'd say perhaps uh, 
someone who uh, gets a little depressed from time to time and that's a melancholy nature. And we ask the question, why wasn't he with the others on that first Sunday? And it could be that after the death of Jesus, uh, this melancholy nature of, uh, of Thomas's took over a bit and led him away and sort of sat in a corner and moped by himself. You know, we, people do that. And in doing that, his despair and disappointment, his grief even, probably uh, became exaggerated. Thomas would have been better off had he been with his friends and the fellowship of the other disciples with those who he knew, those who he had spent the last three years with. He would have had their company to help him, to encourage him, and, and he would have seen Jesus that first time. Sometimes when we hide ourselves away, we can miss out on important things. Well, the worst thing I think that a, a Christian can do when doubt and disbelief enter in and begin to shade the sun in their sky, the worst thing is to go away by themselves, to hide in a corner, to mope and get all introverted. And right. We shouldn't do that. The best thing for us to do in times like that is to seek the company of the saints to enjoy some good fellowship, you know, and at church it's what we do. You know, we have a, a cup of coffee and a, a going to have cake. It's going to be good today. We have a cup of coffee and, and, and a piece of cake or something and a bit of conversation. We share some fellowship here at church. That's not what we're all about. I mean, that's great to do. But isn't it nice? I like to do that. Just a bit of a chat, a fellowship. I know the young people do too. They're forever chatting, <laughs> playing games and doing things. It's good. Church is a place to be and, and, and if the sermon doesn't give you a, a bit of heart and the love of the brethren surely will. You know, a, a lengthy solitude is not the best medicine for someone who's a little melancholy saddened by something that's happened in their life. You know, when the fire is, is going out and there's just a few coals there remaining, sort of dust staying, glowing, the thing to do is to draw those coals together and add a little bit of new kindling, so a few sticks and bits and pieces and soon enough, there'll be a burst of new flame and the fire will begin to, uh, to burn again and generate heat again. And the gathering of the saints together to worship the Lord is like that. It's like adding a little fuel to the fire of our faith and, and it gives light to our life. So... That's the way it ought to be. But whatever the reason was, uh, Thomas wasn't with his friends that first Sunday after the Lord's resurrection. However, uh, it wasn't long before he found out just what he missed out on. Probably saw his friends down in the shopping mall or whatever it was that they had in those days and they said to him, oh, Thomas, you missed out should have been there and you can imagine how the conversation went in fact the Bible tells us that the disciples other disciples told him what happened and for Thomas it's all too much it's all too incredible it's unbelievable and he wasn't having any of it if they saw what they said they saw he wasn't believing it it wasn't a matter of doubt. It was a matter of non-belief. That's what he said, wasn't it? Unless I see, unless I touch, I'm not going to believe. At this point, it's unbelief. Thomas was so determined that he demanded a very high level of proof. Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails 
and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Can you imagine that? And what an amazing statement. Unless I can prove it for myself, if I can physically touch and feel and see, I'm not going to believe. Can you imagine what might have been on, uh, in Thomas's life had that which he had asked for not come about? Thomas's faith, Thomas's ability to, to survive, Thomas's uh, uh, work would never have happened. But Thomas, in his melancholy state, had diminished his faith. And he was disappointed. He'd missed out on something. Um, but he wouldn't accept anything but that same experience. Not only to see, but to touch if he was going to believe. And we think about Thomas, and this is because, this is the reason why we call him Doubting Thomas. And uh, it's, it's easy for us to call him that and to think perhaps a little disparagingly about, uh, about Thomas. But you see, we've got the book. We've got the end of the story. We know what happened. Thomas, he didn't. He's there in the moment. It's different. if he was to ever see Christ again, Jesus had to do something. If his demands were not met, he'd be the one who said, see, told you so. Never happened. You know? And there are people around like that today. There, there are people who refuse to believe what the scriptures say. Right now, Thomas was a rejecting disbeliever of the truth. Uh, and they're all around you today. Those who, when you try to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them, reject it in unbelief. There is at the moment, I'm trying to think of the lady's name, but she's a member of parliament in a European country, is it Sweden? I can't recall, who is presently being put on trial as some sort of vilification because she quoted scripture. It's all around us. People who refuse to believe and who will fight against the word of God. They reject it in unbelief. And they leave you wondering why. How can it be that the Bible is not proof enough how can it be what many witnesses have shown to be true what God's word has has demonstrated and proven throughout the ages isn't that proof enough isn't God's word good enough can you imagine Thomas's friends his fellow disciples pleading with him it's true it really is. I wonder, have you pleaded with your friends sometimes? It's true. You really are a sinner. You, there really is a penalty for sin. And Jesus Christ died to pay the penalty of that sin. It's true. And he rose again so that we can know there is life after death. It really is so. It's true. The Bible says so. Have you pleaded with a friend uh, sometime and had them just say, no, I don't believe. But perhaps you've had the delight of somebody saying, oh, yes, thank you. When I think of this uh, chronic unbelief that I see here, I'm, I'm reminded of the father who came to Jesus with his son, his son who was possessed with a terrible uh, evil spirit. 
and the disciples weren't able to deal with it. And in Mark's gospel, we'll read about it in Mark chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. And Mark records this. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. Jesus rebuked and cast out the devil, the evil spirit, and the boy was healed. And I've no doubt at all that at that time the father was also cured of his unbelief. Amen. There can come a time for all of us when we need to pray that kind of prayer. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief is there something about the scriptures something about christ that you don't believe and yet there it is in the scriptures but you can't believe it i remember when not long after i was first saved and i was uh, doing a little bible study with a few neighbors of mine in country town where i lived and uh, we were reading the scriptures in the book of genesis and as, I, as we were reading and studying through, I had to make a decision. And I, at that point in time, remember making a conscious decision to believe what the scriptures said in Genesis. And it changed so many things in my life because now I had decided God's word was true. Sometimes we need to believe we need to make that decision, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. What a strange and difficult week it must have been for Thomas. The time between when his friends first told him that they saw the Lord and that they'd been part of that wonderful occasion and the time when Thomas finally had his faith restored. What a strange week that would have been. I wonder what he thought about. I wonder what he did. You now we don't have knowledge of that. Um, I don't know what he did. Um, did he go away and think about all of these things? Uh, did he, what did he do? Thomas later had his faith restored. We can think that perhaps it might have been kinder if Jesus had have said, oh, poor old Thomas, I'll put him out of his misery and uh, I'll go visit him today. But no. Jesus waited till they were gathered together. I wonder if that says something to us. But when we're gathered together as a church, when we're gathered together in the name of the Lord, that's when great blessings will come. That's when there'll be that renewal. That's when our prayers can be answered. On the next Sunday, Thomas was with them. Not going to miss out this time, guys. I'm going to be there. Probably arrived early. And so it was that Jesus invited Thomas to investigate the rear the uh, reality of his resurrection he said be not faithless but believing now if we look at thomas's response we can't help notice there's no record of thomas touching jesus what was his demand i won't believe unless i touch you know put my hand in his the wound here and the hand, wound in his side and so on i unless i touch him I want to see him and I want to touch him. And yet no record of him ever touching Jesus is there. We do have a record, though, of the wonderful words that Thomas said on that occasion. Thomas, in absolute faith, having seen Christ and knowing 
I guess he didn't need to touch him. He said, my Lord and my God. There must have been a rush of instant conviction that swept Thomas up and carried him on to faith that was not to be repented of. Thomas believed that Jesus was risen from the dead. Thomas believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Thomas believed that Jesus died on the cross, paid the penalty for his sin, and he would very soon know and believe that Jesus Christ would be in heaven. He saw it with his eyes and it convicted him and it convinced him. There was inner awakening. There was a rekindling of that little fire, those coals of faith that were still there. Um, a renewing of the spirit which had been grieved by an over-pessimistic view. That unwillingness to accept the witness of his dearest friends was overcome when he said, my Lord and my God. People often talk about the object of Christian faith and and one amongst many things we are to bring glory to God of course but the Christian faith isn't to learn a certain collection of words as in a memory verse scripture although that's good and important to do neither is it to know some doctrine or some statement of faith it's not even believing certain facts that the Bible might relate the object of the Christian faith is a person. And when Thomas saw the person of the risen Christ, when he saw the Lord, the whole nature of his faith changed. You see, Jesus Christ is to be the focus of our attention. Many other people who believe certain facts and yet remain unrepentant of their sins and unsaved from their dilemma. Lots of people believe lots of things, but that's not the faith required for salvation. Jesus said these words unto Thomas on that day. Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Saving faith is sight, but it's not that physical sight, that thing we see with our eye, it's that inward sight. It's a direct perception of the unseen word of God. If we are to be saved, we must have that inward sight, the spirit that causes us to believe God without physical evidence. We're not going to see Jesus Christ in the flesh this side of glory but what we have is his word a reliable trustworthy word of God the vision given to the eye of faith is more real more substantial more reliable and nearer in every sense than the things that our eyes see in our flesh God's word reminds us of course in Hebrews chapter 11 the first couple of verses faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and for by it the elders received a good report and we can receive a good report too when we believe that which we may not see in the physical but which we can believe spiritually the Holy Spirit of God, the Comforter that Jesus said would be sent, is sent to guide us. And Jesus still says to you and to me, as he said to Thomas that day, be not faithless, but believing. And yours will be the blessing of faith. Yours will be the wonder of knowing you have a place in heaven. The amazing hope that comes from trusting Jesus Christ. And you and I 
can be amongst those of whom Jesus spoke when he said, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are they. God's blessing is to you who will believe. And in my life, God's blessed. And I'm sure he has in yours. Is that you though? Have you believed? Will you believe and be blessed? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, today. Thank you for the testimony that we see in the scriptures, the story of Thomas. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to be believing. And Lord, take away those doubts. Remove them, just as surely as you did for Thomas that day when he said, my Lord and my God. And so, Lord, we pray that though we may not see you in the reality of our world, we will know you in the reality of our spirit. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Hall, would you come forward and lead us in a closing hymn? And... Uh, We'll get Hannah up here to sing and <coughs> Mrs. Hall to play the piano and we'll all join in. Thanks, Pastor Hall. You're welcome. Thank you for that message. Uh, I didn't get the title, but I sure got, uh, I got some teaching from that. Uh, may all of our faiths be encouraged and uh, increased from uh, what uh, God's Word tells us about Doubting Thomas, who became believing Thomas. Amen? All right, let's go to 413. We'll close with uh, faith is the victory. Let's all be upstanding. 413, faith is the victory. Do you need a victory? Then uh, trust the Lord. Trust what his word says, what his Holy Spirit is uh, telling you to do. 413. <clears throat> The hills of light, the Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night to veil the glowing skies against. I hope you've been encouraged. I hope you've been challenged a little bit uh, to have more faith. And, you know, it's good to have a faith that's increasing and growing, but more than the amount of faith, it's the object of our faith. Pastor mentioned it. The Bible tells us it's faith in God. 
Hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's close in prayer. But remember, have uh, another cup of coffee, a little bit of fellowship. Uh, and uh, let's remember to be here. Uh, a whole, whole idea in that sermon, what you, you miss when you're missing out on being with God's people. Mm. But remember, we've got a, uh, a little bit more fellowship we can have. We've got a, a cake to share, too. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for the uh, fellowship today. Thank you for the, the preaching and teaching of your word. Lord, we're so thankful. I, I, just so many things I, I saw today that, that, uh, that uh, were preached, uh, things that, that uh, are in your word. Lord, one of them, just that, that uh, you came again and you did uh, show yourself to Thomas. And Lord, I'm so thankful that he believed. I pray that you'd help each one of us to get another glimpse of your truth, another uh, reading, uh, another uh, vision, Lord, seeing uh, something in the world around us, uh, something in your word that proclaims you. And Lord, may we, like Thomas, believe. I pray that you'd help us to have uh, the victory in our lives that, that requires faith in you, in your word, and obedience to you. I pray that each one of us would, uh, would take steps of faith and obedience that, uh, that lead to uh, those victories that, uh, that we can have. Please bless our little fellowship now, Lord. Bless us as we go our separate ways. Help us in this week to uh, be following you and uh, to be trusting and believing in you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.